Okay, chapter 37 spends a couple of pages looking at what's called ecological succession. And ecological succession is how communities come about. Um, and there are two ways that communities can come about. And the first is primary succession. Primary succession um, is predictable. We can predict the sequence of events in terms of building a community. Primary succession is the colonization of a barren habitat. For example, the formation of uh, volcanic islands. You've got molten material that solidifies to rock. Um, nothing living is present. Uh, so the key here is abiotic initially nothing living. Um, it's also important to note that with primary succession there is no soil initially. Soil is absent. Pioneer species are the first organisms to take hold of the new community and they are responsible for making the new soil in the community. Pioneer species are very tough and hardy and they are usually brought by the wind. Um, some examples are small plants like mosses. So they take hold in cracks of the rocks and ultimately, over time, uh, help build the soil in the new community. Uh, a predictable sequence of events follows, so from pioneer species all the way to what's called the climax community. The climax community is stable, experiences less change, and has a consistent species composition. So if you look at a brief picture of primary succession, again, we're starting with rock, so abiotic conditions, no soil, starting with our pioneer species as our first members of the community. And once the soil is established, we can begin to support larger autotrophs um, until eventually we can support um, much larger autotrophs, and subsequently uh, the heterotroph community. Secondary succession is when a disturbed area within a community recovers. So recovery is important here. Um, in secondary succession, soil is already present. Uh, so we are not starting from scratch. We are just bouncing back from a disturbance. For example, a forest fire, like the ones that occurred in Yellowstone National Park in the early 90s, serves as a disturbance. The forest community was able to recover. Um, just looking at the picture, you can see that the smaller autotrophs, the grasses, the shrubs, beginning to return. So secondary succession, there already is soil present. We are not starting from scratch. It's still predictable. There's still a predictable sequence of events, usually smaller to larger. Um, and it doesn't have to be necessarily a natural disaster. Um, you know, a forest fire is a good example, um, an earthquake, a flood, those are examples of disturbances, but it could be something that um, is man-made or a man-made disturbance. Uh, mowing your lawn a couple times a week in the summer is a disturbance. You are disturbing the autotroph community in your yard. Um, if you don't mow it, so take away the disturbance, and the community starts to recover, and it goes back to, probably in Ohio, it will begin to resemble more of a deciduous type forest. So if you didn't mow your yard all summer, you'd come back and see um, some larger autotrophs taking root, some shrubs, some small trees, probably going to see some more um, heterotrophs moving in, some larger animals that you typically wouldn't see had you continued to mow your yard, um, continued with the disturbance.